Hello and welcome to a new video about networks. This time we are talking about Ethernet, a widely used implementation of some layers. Yeah? And basically Ethernet is defining layer 1 and 2, so the physical layer and the, the transmission layer. Uh, well, so Ethernet is layer 1. And two are defined. And there were basically it was thought to be used in so called LAN, yeah? L A N, local area networks. This was the root of, of Ethernet. Huh? There was not, there's not only one Ethernet, there are several Ethernet standards over time. Okay? We are going to, to distribute this. So uh, we have some standards. Yeah? We have some standards. Over time. Yeah? Current transmission rates are talking about what is standardized, eh? not what is still in use or not yet in use, but in, in this inside the standard. Okay? So we have here 1, 10, 100, or 1000 one mega. Bit per second transmission, and then there are even standards 2.5, 5, 10, 40, 50, 100, 200, 400 gigabit per second. Okay, so there is a wide area of different, different standards. Yeah? And it may be based for for in instance uh, TCP IP. Okay. TCP IP, IPX, SPX, Apple Talk. Uh, this is all using Ethernet as a base layer, as an upper layer protocols. We're talking about this. Huh? Talking about this, so what is Ethernet? Ethernet, the idea is if of Ethernet is a high frequency transmission on a cable. Huh? So we have high frequency transmission There are several cables in use. There are coaxial cable, there are twisted pair cable. There's even uh, fiber wire cables. Cables. A high frequency transmission on a cable. Usually, we have a baseband transmission. Time multiplex. This basically means I have one transmission on the Y at a time. Uh, not in different frequency areas, different transmissions parallel and so on. No, we are using the baseband, which is just putting some levels on there. Yeah? And uh, if we want to transmit more than one signal over the same line, we don't do it by fancy tricks. We do it usually with time multiplexing. Yeah? So one time, one at a time. How to reach this? Yeah, we have originally we have one shared media. In the first internet, it was a coaxial cable. Coaxial cable, all right. One shared media, and each interface.
has a 48 bit unique address. This is so called MAC address. I'm sure you heard already. MAC address of my Ethernet port. Huh? This is the MAC address. Yeah. And yeah, we have a shared media. What does it mean, shared media? This means actually everybody can access the media. But somehow it has to be realized that not everybody is using, I said it's time multiplex. Only one transmission at a time. So how is this done that we only have one signal at a time? There, the function, this is called the used collision detection. This is called CS. M A C T. What means carrier sense multiple access collision collision <laughs> detection C S M A C T. Huh? What does it mean? If one station wants to wants to send something, huh? how is it done in real world? If I want to tell something, and there would be really some opponent and not just a camera, I would. And if I'm polite, and usually I am, huh? uh, then I would wait until. There's nobody talking. Okay, that's carrier sense. Huh? So carrier sense before sending C if some other station is currently Sending. If I see this, then I don't do anything. Huh? Then, if I'm sure nobody is currently transmitting, I'm starting to send. Okay? So, but there would be the case that multiple access, maybe two stations are sending at the same time. Yeah? Then there is a collision because both are starting to talk. One station at least is noticing it is not understanding anything. Huh? No, <laughs> because yeah, it's simply a mixture. Yeah, and this is then collision detection. Nothing is understood. Send of collision signal, so called jam signal. This jam signal is signaling, it's a special form, and it's signaling the other stations hey, I, there is something going on. Yeah, no, no, there is a jam, we have a jam. Uh, however, this jam station, this jam signal needs to be at the transmitting station in time so that uh, the transmitting station is realizing, oof, okay, oof, somebody else is talking as well. Yeah? So, uh, th this means depending on the transmission rate and on the length of the cables. We do have uh, the situation that we need to have a certain minimum length so that the jam signal can inform the sender that this signal will not be received in time. Because if the sender already finished sending, then the jam signal would be too late, right? 
So there is a minimum time which the sender needs to need to send. Yeah? And this is simply to ensure the transmission. This is why if you don't have to send a lot of data, you need to fill in buffer frames. You need to fill in buffer data so that the, the frame is having a certain length that it takes some time. So even if you send small chunks of data, you need to send more. Huh? You need to send simply more. And what does this mean? Yeah? In example, in example, minimum frame length, like I said, it's depending on transmission rate and on cable length, yeah, at 10 megabit and 2.5 kilometers length. would be, for instance, 64 bytes. 64 bytes is the minimum frame length. It's not just 64 byte data, because the, we will see there are header files and there are there is something around. Yeah, Not only data, data would be less. Yeah, But the minimum, minimum frame length is 64 bytes in this case. Yeah? So if I have to send less only one byte, yeah, I have to fill this up. This is this is and this is the reason for this that this is filled right? because it said stupid right and also said originally we had one shared media so every station every station received the same amount right? one shared media Every station received all data in the original original Ethernet. Okay, every station received all data. So this means the stations had quite a lot of traffic there, yeah, and they needed. Um, Quite some effort to to sort the traffic out. Is this packet for me? No. Is this no no? This for me? No no no. Yes no yes no 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 yes yes. Some where some not. And the more stations are in the Ethernet, yeah, the more likely it is that a collision is happening. Yeah, the most the more our stations are waiting. Have a told what is happening if a collision is detected? No. Then, <laughs> yeah, what is happening then? The, the sender shuts up. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Waiting a um, certain time. It's not a fixed time. It's a, a, a random time. Yeah. And then, starting again. Listening. Okay. So this is what is done in collision detection. And if the more stations there is, the more likely it is that there is a collision, and so it will that the performance will decrease, depending on how many stations there are. Also, if there are hubs and and uh, repeaters in there, this would not change anything because hubs and repeaters do repeat and 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 repeating hub yeah, at every every. Cable simply. So there is no change in this. So this also means it's very easy to, to listen to the conversations, right? So it's easy to spy a conversation. In the original internet, yeah. Okay, there might be, you know, there might be cryptography and some in some upper layers, so that you can spy on the conversation, but you don't uh, understand anything because it's simply encrypted. But this is only half of the information. 
Yeah, or it, it is a great deal of the information, agreed. Yeah, but what you cannot hide is who is talking to whom. Yeah. So because you want to have this received, and this already allows a lot of uh, a lot of things. What is an important channel, communication channel? Yeah, if I want to disturb something because I'm a mean person, if I want to disturb something, I don't have to know exactly what is has been talked. I just have to jam this somehow to, to disturb this. And if I can filter out what are important communication partners, I simply jam one of them. And then I'm sure I'm making a maximum amount of, of, of damage there in the conversation. So it's easy to spy in the conversation. Yeah? And cryptography in upper layers might be a solution that is not understood. However, it's cannot mask anything, everything. Can mask something, but not everything. That you know what I wanted to say, okay. <laughs> uh, we had a solution to this. We talked about this solution. And the solution is switches, yeah? bridges, and switches. are used. Now we usually have a fully switched. Yeah? Now fully switched network is usual. So every every connector, every network board has is hidden beyond its own bridge switch. Yeah? So there is no collision. Because it's the bridge and it's me. There is no other one in my, our collision domain. All right? So this means I can send every, at any time and I can receive at any time. I'm able to send and receive at the same time. I'm in full duplex mode. So this fully switched networks are in full duplex, duplex mode and we can receive and send. Yeah? So this basically means every station in the network in the fully switched network, can send and receive whenever it likes. And not all of the conversation is... The only, only a small part, part of the conversation broadcasts, for instance, yeah, if there is something meant to be sent to every station, I can issue a so-called broadcast, and this broadcast is then handed by a bridge or a, a switch, uh, switching hub to all ports. Uh. This is a special type of, of, of frame. This would be one type, but usually in broadcasts you don't hide any confidential information. Uh. Usually only the two communication partners which are involved get the packets. So the spying is limited, let's say. Uh, this does not usually mean this does this I said okay, we can send and, and receive at any time we like. However, if two stations are sending and one is receiving because all two stations are sending to this one because this one is some central position or something like this. Then there might be a jam there. Yeah. So this is not. This doesn't mean everybody has full bandwidth there. Yeah? So we need to slow down the conversation. Uh, there's there's still room uh, for for collisions and so on. So there is still room for for traffic jams. And I said it's not that easy to spy on this. Yeah. Is there a possibility to spy? Yes. Yeah. Spying. How is spying spelled? Spying or spying? I like this better. Spy. Make flooding. One possibility. Eh? And make spoofing. So there are still possibilities. All right. What is make flooding? Yeah. 
issue a lot of frames with different make addresses. What does it mean? If I issue a, a frame with a new MAC address, then the switch usually don't know where should this go? Uh, hey, I don't know this MAC address, this receiver. Uh, so I send it to everybody. Uh, and is entering a lot of, then somebody is receiving. I have to I have to do this also, yeah, receiving and so on. And we have slowly filling the the address table of the of the bridge, yeah. where it learns where which uh, MAC address can be found. We're filling this up, and once the the table is filled, then it will switch to a to a false mode, yeah, fallback mode. And will act as a hub and sending every every information to all ports. And suddenly, poo, it's open. All right? So this is one possibility. In modern switches, where are where the, these tables are pretty big, so it's <laughs> yeah. But what's also possible is max spoofing. Yeah. Do not use the hardware. Mac, but the software generated. This means I am masking myself as an other member, and suddenly I also receive the information of those members to so say, "Hey, I am, I am this person over there." What do you mean? Delivery guy is coming. Are you? Are you Hans Petrushovsky? My neighbor says, yes, sure. It looks expensive. Yeah. Max spoofing. Also one possibility. Okay. So basically, that's a short overview over the working principles of Ethernet. Now, next time we're talking about the lower layer, the physical layer of Ethernet. What possibilities do we have there? what are ancient, what are currently in use, and so on. We will have a look at this next video. Uh, next video, Ethernet Physical Layer. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.